Hello, welcome to Reso Coder. In this video, we are gonna take a first look at the so called Material Design 2.0. This is a really exciting time for Android developers because we have a support library version 28, although it's still only in alpha. In this tutorial, we are gonna build a really simple app which just contains a material button, then a chip which can be dismissed, closed, right? Also, there is a chip group, which is pretty nice. And then we have a material card, and then last but not least, we have the awesome bottom app bar. It has this nice fab cradle. There is a bit of a curvature over there. Also, the fab has a different kind of animation. It is more white this time. And also, you can have a normal menu on this bottom app bar. So when we click this, we can register it in an activity and then we display a toast. This is a normal classical menu. And actually this bottom app bar is set up as a support action bar. So let's get to it. We are going to create a new app and make sure that you have Kotlin support included. And let's start off with an empty activity. Now you want to make sure that your Android studio is at least version 3.1, but 3.2 and higher is better. Then we want to open up SDK Manager, which is this icon. And you need to have an Android P Preview SDK downloaded. Later it will be called Android 9 and some name, for example Peppermint. It doesn't really matter, but all that matters is that you need to have an API level 28 or P downloaded. Also go into SDK Tools tab and you want to have at least Android SDK Build Tools version 28. Once we have that, we want to go to the build.gradle for the module app and change compile SDK version to be Android P or 28 if you are watching this later and it's not only a developer preview. So Android P. The target SDK version can stay as it is and then scroll down and we want to add one new library which is support design library and its version is 28 and alpha 1. We also want to change all of the other support libraries to be of this version. So copy this and we want to replace this 27.1.1 with this new version. And also on a side note, this JRE is deprecated and you want to replace it with a JDK. Also in the description is a link to the updated versions of these support libraries. And there is a link to the code from this tutorial too. Awesome. Now let's go into styles.xml. So open up app res, values and styles. The app theme will no longer inherit from theme.appcompat, but rather from theme.materialcomponents. And also it wouldn't be a bad idea to sync the project, so press sync now. And now this material components actually works. All right, now let's go to activitymain.xml. We are going to delete this text view and the root layout will be a coordinator layout, not a constraint layout. So change the opening and the closing tag. And now we want to have a floating action button over here. Its width and height will be wrap content. The layout margin will be 16 dp. Then the app fab size will be normal. We want it to have an icon. So let's add all of the icons that we are going to use in this tutorial. So right click on drawable new vector asset. Click on this clip art and we want to search for add and this simple add and its color will be white. So select the color white. All right. Actually, this is not completely white. We want to have a fully white color and we are going to call it IC at white 24 DP. Now next and finish. We want to do the same thing with additional two icons. So we have IC Android white and also close circle black. So now the source image for this floating action button will be the add white. Next up, we want to add the awesome bottom app bar. Its width will be match parent and its height will be add diamond material bottom app bar height, which is actually suggested right away. We can delete the closing tag and instead add a slash over here. This bottom app bar will also have an ID bottom app bar and its gravity will be bottom. Then the background tint of this bottom app bar will be color primary. 
Sadly, you cannot see it in this preview, but you are gonna see it in an emulator. That's because Android Studio is just not working with this alpha version of the support library. Then we want to say that the floating action button is actually attached to this bottom app bar. So fab attached is true. The fab alignment mode will be aligned to the end. And then let's come back to this floating action button. And we want to specify its layout anchor. And it's going to be at ID bottom app bar. And you can already see some changes happening in the designer. Now let's run this app in an emulator and we can see that it looks nice. Now let's make this bottom app bar actually useful by creating a menu and putting it on this bottom app bar. So right click on REST, we want to create a new Android resource directory. Its directory name will be menu. And inside this menu directory, we want to create a new menu resource file, bottom app bar menu. And this menu will have only one item. Its ID will be at plus ID action show toast. The title will be show toast. Its icon will be add drawable. I see add white 24 DP and also show as action will be only if room. Now let's go to main activity class and we can work with the bottom app bar just like with a regular toolbar. So we can set support action bar to be the bottom app bar. And then we want to override on create options menu. And over here, we want to write menu inflator inflate. And we want to inflate our dot menu bottom app bar menu. And somehow it's not showing here. So we want to go to build and rebuild project. But first we want to comment out this unfinished function and now press rebuild project. Now we can uncomment this function and hopefully it will all work. And yeah, it will work. So bottom app bar menu is now here. And also we want to pass in the menu, which is passed as an argument for this function and then return true. Let's also override another function on options item selected. And if item and the item ID, which we want to access with a null safe access operator. And if this item ID is equal to R dot ID dot action show toast, we want to actually show a toast, make text. The context is this and the text will be toast. The length will be toast dot length short. And finally, we want to show it and then return true. If we had Enco installed, this toast call could be much more short. We don't have it, but if you want to check out the tutorial about Enco, you can do so by clicking on the card in the corner. Whew. All right, now let's launch this app in an emulator. And we actually have an error. That is because we need to go back to styles.xml and we need to specify that this theme will not have an action bar. So no action bar. That's because we are replacing the action bar with this bottom app bar right over here in this line of code. So now when we run this again, it's going to work. And when we click on this menu item, it's going to display a toast as we could expect. Cool. Now let's head back to the XML and let's create a linear layout over here. And as always, you can get the code from the link in the video description. So if you don't want to type along and you just want to check out the code later, you can do so from that link, which is going to take you to resocoder.com. All right. So first up, let's demonstrate the material button. It's with and how it will be wrap content. And also the layout gravity of all the views, which are going to be in this linear layout will be center horizontal. You can set the text of this button as usual as you would expect. So this will be say hello. You can also change the background tint and we are going to set it to be color primary. You can also change the corner radius, which is pretty awesome. And this time it's going to be 10 DP. You can immediately see that it's much rounder. And now comes an awesome part because you can add an icon to the button and the icon for this button will be IC Android white. And as if this wasn't enough, you can also change the tint of the icon. So icon tint and it will be the Android green color. And we can also change the ripple color. So app ripple color. And this time it's going to be color accent. And when we run this, 
and click this button, you can see that it surely has color accent ripple. Next up, we have a chip. Its width and height will be wrap content. We will want to get this chip from the activity, so we also need to set its ID, and its ID will be single chip. The gravity will be also center horizontal, and the margin top will be ADP. Now comes the good stuff. You cannot set the text just like text, because when you start writing, it writes to the top of the chip and not to the center. We instead need to use app chip text. And this is where the code completion fails in this Android Studio version, but I'm sure that in the more up-to-date versions, this will be fixed. Anyway, the chip text will be a single chip. It can also have a close icon, and it will be add drawable IC close circle black, but we cannot see it, right? That's because we need to specify close icon enabled, and we want it to be true. And now the close icon is here. Let's go to main activity class for a bit. And inside on create, we want to get the single chip. And we want to set its on close icon click listener. And here we want to simply set its visibility to be view.invisible. All right, now let's run this again. Here is the chip. And when we click on the close icon, it's going to disappear. Normally, you would use chips for contextual information, which you want to present to the user. Then there is also a chip drawable, which you can include in a text. That's pretty useful for when you want to display, for example, contacts. And sometimes you need to display them in a text view. Like, for example, an email app Gmail does that. When you have a drawable and not a view, as for example, this chip is a view, you can pretty simply include it in a text view. We aren't gonna delve into creating chip drawables in this tutorial, but if you wanna learn how to do that, there will be a link in the video description. All right, now let's move on. We wanna create a chip group. Its width and height will be wrap content. The gravity will be also center horizontal and the margin top will be 32 dp. Oh, and we wanna create chip group, not a simple chip. This chip group will contain two chips. The first one will simply say chip. And the second one will be more interesting. It's going to say group. And we also want to change its background color. So chip background color. And it will be equal to add color slash color accent. Then we also want to add a chip icon. And there will be add drawable slash IC Android white. And you can also toggle if the chip icon is enabled. So we could make this false and the chip icon will be no longer there, but we can just delete this line of chip icon enabled and it's gonna be enabled by default. You can also make the chip selectable and specify stuff in the chip group so that only one chip inside this chip group can be selected. We aren't gonna do that in this tutorial because this is really just a quick overview, but if you wanna learn more, you can check out the stuff from the link in the video description. And finally, there is material card view. We are gonna set its width to be wrap content. The gravity will be also center horizontal and the margin top will be 32 dp as well. First, let's add a content view to this card and then we are gonna style it further. So we want to have a text view over here, wrap content for width and height. The margin will be a dp and then the text will be hello world, I am a brand new material card and we are creating a new line with this backslash and N. We also wanna set the text alignment to be center, and then also the text appearance will be app compat title, just like this. And now let's style this card. We can set its stroke color to be color primary dark, and also its stroke width to be 2dp. And it starts to look really interesting. Now let's build this app for the final time and we can see all of these material widgets together in their full glory. So we have a material button, we have a chip which we can dismiss or close, then we have a chip group, then a new material card view which we can style with a stroke and by the way you can also add a stroke to the button and finally we have the most awesome feature which is the bottom app bar with its fab cradle. 
If you don't want to miss more videos like this, subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button so that you are gonna be notified about all of my new videos. If you enjoyed this tutorial about all of the new material views, give this video a like and also share it. To get the code from this tutorial, click on the link in the video description, which is gonna take you to resocoder.com. If you have anything to say, leave a comment, follow me on social media, and see you in the next video.